what's on your radar? Well, last Friday, the Norwegian government abruptly announced that beginning the very next day, all COVID restrictions would end. No vaccine mandates, no vaccine passports, no masks, full capacity at every venue, large concerts, parties, sporting events, you name it. Normal life would resume. Prime Minister Ernest Solberg warned, quote, even though everyday life is now back to normal for most people, the pandemic is not over. People will still get sick, and therefore, it is important that everyone gets vaccinated. The country currently has 67% of its population fully vaccinated. However, despite the high rates, this month the country also saw its largest spike in COVID cases, which it is now finally coming down from. The reason for lifting all of the restrictions isn't what you would expect. The Norwegian government didn't cite high vaccination rates or even having the virus under control as justification for returning to life as normal. Instead, the prime minister said the lifting of restrictions is due to fatigue in the public of constantly changing restrictions and the lack of normalcy in their daily lives. She cautioned that the virus is still with the world, so take personal responsibility. Hearing the news, the Norwegian people flooded the streets Saturday in celebrations that rivaled Mardi Gras. Singapore has also announced it will be living with COVID. The country has 82% of its population fully vaccinated with Pfizer and Moderna nearly exclusively. Despite the extremely high rate, Singapore is in the middle of its largest wave ever in cases, hospitalizations and deaths. Because of the immense pressure on their hospitals, the country has implemented temporary restrictions to slow the spread while they ramp up building more medical facilities. But once they do that, they say life will go on as normal, even though they anticipate doing so will result in waves three times the size of what they're currently experiencing. The cases. government has said time and time again, expect cases to rise. We mm. have seen that. Right. But the government has also said we will live with COVID. Sure. Endemic states. What does that entail? How does that look like? So we are moving in this journey towards living with COVID. And that's why you would see with the restrictions that we have taken, we have not gone back to a circuit breaker or to a lockdown. We are tightening measures so that we can slow down the rate of transmission and use this time to augment our healthcare capacity and to be able to deal with a higher volume of cases without our healthcare system being overwhelmed. I'm quite sure even after we have stabilized our healthcare system, gotten the new capacity in place, cases will continue to be high. The virus will continue to circulate. That's what living with COVID means. And, and that's what we are on a journey towards. Health experts in Singapore say part of this new transition to living with COVID will include a mentality shift. They say the messaging surrounding COVID-19 as a dangerous and deadly disease needs to change. That the messaging to the public that COVID-19 is predominantly a mild disease needs to be clear. And it seems the government of Singapore is listening. They are now urging people to not rush off to the hospital when they test positive, but to instead stay home, use self-care, and not to worry. One thing to note is that neither the government of Norway nor Singapore even mention the unvaccinated. They do not place blame on the people who have not chosen to get the vaccines. In Norway, the prime minister urged people, especially minority communities, to get vaccinated, but never demonized them nor blamed them for their latest surge in cases or inability to eradicate the virus. There are no passports or mandates in either country, people living as equals regardless of their medical status. They urge people to get vaccinated, but beyond that, there are no checks or restrictions on those who haven't. Other countries have also chosen to live with the virus. The UK lifted all restrictions in July, despite increasing numbers. However, they are reserving the right to reverse this winter if hospitalizations increase. Denmark, Portugal, and Ireland have also announced a lifting of all restrictions, citing high vaccination rates. They know that things might get worse and they may also reverse course. But for now, they are saying as long as hospitalizations remain low, they will continue to just live with the ever spreading, ever mutating virus. Thailand is also now living with the virus despite low vaccination rates and increasing cases. There are a few takeaways from the increase in countries choosing to simply live with it. First of all, it is impossible to eradicate the virus if countries are just letting it circulate. They are not attempting to get rid of it anymore. Singapore is anticipating larger spikes than what they have now, but the reason they are letting it circulate is because they know there is no getting rid of the virus. They've come to terms with that fact and have moved on, focusing on hospitalizations and death rates. In focusing on hospitalizations and deaths, these countries are now sending the message to their public that the young and healthy are not at high risk. When you catch COVID, stay home, self-isolate, and take care of yourself. 
for the mass, vast majority of people, COVID-19 is a mild disease. Singapore has begun giving out booster doses to their most vulnerable to keep them protected since they know they are the ones to likely end up hospitalized. None of these countries are panicking about their unvaccinated children. These countries are ahead of us in vaccination rates with the same vaccines we use here in this country. And yet in these nations, just like in Israel, massive spread still happens. This shows us that unfortunately, there doesn't seem to be a magical herd immunity threshold we can hit that will stop the spread. Perhaps the metric we should focus on is hospitalizations and deaths. We know the groups who are most at risk of severe outcomes. That hasn't really changed despite the new variants. The elderly, people with hypertension or diabetes, and people with a BMI over 35, amongst other risk factors. Perhaps we should have a public health campaign to educate people about their individual risk while ramping up hospital capacity in the same way Singapore is doing. One thing seems certain. With increasing mandates and the constant dehumanizing of the unvaccinated, we are tearing away at the fabric of our free nation while furthering the divide between us. And in the end, the virus will still be here. So I'm curious uh, from your guys' perspective, at what point do you think our country, given the hyper-politicized nature of the virus, will get to this point similar to Singapore where we say, hey, listen, even with extremely high rates of vaccination, you know, they're 82 percent fully vaccinated, a little bit higher if you count. They don't count their uh, the, the people, the five percent of them that got the, the Chinese vaccine. But if you do count them, then, you know, they're getting up to 90 percent. You know, at what point are we going to also get to this point where we say cases are going to be high? We're going to have to live with it. I, th- I think we're going to get there, but we're going to get there in a different way than Singapore in, in this sense. In, in a lot of blue areas, uh, you're going to have vaccination rates that will you know, approach that, that level. And at that point, the, the case number isn't, the, it, as you said, isn't the meaningful statistic, because if you're vaccinated and you catch it, even if you're at a, at a higher risk, your chances of, of surviving it and not even getting a, a, you know, severe illness uh, are are much greater, and so that way you can you can live with the case rate being higher, just as we learned to live with the flu. You know, the Spanish flu from 1918, 1919, you know, never never went away. It's become an endemic. It's, we have a flu season. We have a flu shot that we get every year, and then at the same time, in, in some of the Trumpier areas, you you may never see vaccine uptake reach you know significant levels, but. Uh, you'll 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 continue to see a lot of death and a lot of misery, and with that will come a, a natural natural immunity. And at the same time, they're already saying you know this pandemic's over, even though it isn't. So in in that sense, you'll have both communities saying the pandemic's over. It looks like that. I mean, the, I was just looking at some forecasts, and you know, a lot of the forecasts have turned out to be wrong. So who knows? And we could have, if we had a significant mutation to COVID, then we could still have another really bad wave, which would be terrible. But looking, the forecasters seem to think, you know, this we're at the the last peak, and it's going to peter out over the coming months. Um, I, I'm now. I think the case for easing up restrictions was was very strong as well, like six months ago, because anyone who wants to protect themselves from the worst outcomes of COVID basically can. And you know, we're ma- we're masking children. This isn't something. This no other countries don't do that. Europe doesn't do this. France doesn't do this. Britain doesn't do this. Italy right. doesn't do it. And you know, the, again, the, we we people still don't understand the extreme, or they underestimate the extreme extreme age skew like the 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 unless the, the, a child is, has se- severe immuno immunocompromised issues they i mean their their brush with covid is so extraordinarily likely to be mild we can't you know we can't have that fear holding us back from having a more normal life it's just in saying it makes no sense from looking at the data. One thing to also point out is that in Singapore, when there was ever a discussion about mandating the vaccine, they specifically talk about it for people 60 and over. So they know the risk groups. And they're saying, well, if we're going to mandate it, it should be for the older people because they're the ones that are in the hospital. So, you know, I, I just think it's really interesting how other countries are handling this pandemic, the the discussion they're having around it versus what we're having here, you know, where it's just, it, it, you know, it's just the hyper-politicized nature of the pandemic here in this country, I just think is such such a, a you know, just really devastating, unfortunately. I, I wonder if we'll wear masks on planes forever or other places, just because, 
I think, I mean, I think I've said this on the, on the show maybe a number of times, but stupid policies stick around, have with TSA type things, you know, the, the whole, the, the, we're still taking least, our shoes off, right? We're still taking our shoes off. <laughs> it's no reason to do that. So and they're I, not in Europe. They don't do that in Europe. You know, you just do that here in the U S it's the yeah, strangest I hope thing. It, hope it's not the case, but we'll see. Uh, we'll be back with more rising right after this. <laughs> 